listeners and subscribers hope all is well so i thought this was interesting here i'm subscribed to brian over at high impact flicks and high impact vlogs so i'll leave a link in the description go check him out uh he does he does great content very hard-hitting stuff he says i was in my local bank yesterday a woman was ahead of me her transaction went fine when i stepped up to get some cash out their system went down there were many people in the drive through line and about three or four people inside the bank standing in line they couldn't deposit or withdraw any cash to anybody i went ahead and recorded that as it was happening one day that's bound to happen and last indefinitely makes you think about how much cash you keep in, in banking institutions the video is short it'll be up in less than 20 minutes so you guys can go ahead and check that out i just thought this was appropriate for the topic that we're going to eventually end up getting into but before i do that uh, i think we could go ahead and talk about venezuela okay so venezuela and if you don't know essentially venezuela right now you've got nicolas maduro versus juan guaido and what it's coming down to is who the military will listen to right the economy has been in free fall since the wealth they've accumulated the wealth from their oil that is ran dry from a lot of the socialist programs that they were funding uh, the U.S. has placed sanctions on their oil currently, uh, at least until the opposition takes power, uh, Juan Guaido. Okay, so the U.S. could want in on Venezuela's oil, of course. They they do have the largest proven oil reserve, so they say, uh, or maybe po uh, potentially their gold, right? Because there's been talk about, you know, gold being sent to Russia from Venezuela. And if you can look into it here, I'll even link a description for this article. You know, they talk about about 20 tons of gold from Venezuela, which is um, almost a billion dollars worth of gold uh, is, is being sent out of the country. And for what reasons, you know, who knows, you know, pick your reasons. People have their own theories. I'm not here to throw fuel in that fire. But if you think about it, you know, Iraq, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, you know, Venezuela is just next in line. And really, all I can do is speculate that. Uh, the U.S. is making this move indirectly to undercut another nation by proxy to gain tactical leverage on the geopolitical level. That's, that's really the, my, the best I've got when it comes to Venezuela here. Uh, one thing that I did think was very, very interesting was the Super Bowl, right? Um, how many people watched the Super Bowl? I thought that the fact the government shut down ended just in time was the interesting thing about the Super Bowl. I don't follow um, sports, so I'm woefully ignorant about what goes on in those realms, but it, it, I know that a lot of propaganda and a lot of those e initiatives are ferried through um, pop culture, like the commercials, the halftime shows you see and things and um, uh, related to football and, and things of the ilk uh, the Samuel Adams beer they had right for Tom Brady the the goat the greatest of all time looked exactly like the Baphomet and if you know anything about you know symbols uh, symbolism you know symbols they uh, reveal to the initiated and they conceal from the uninitiated and that's that's just one of those things that when you look at and you know there's something the symbolism behind it and I know there's a couple different schools of thought about the Baphomet but uh, when you see something like that in the, the likeness, you, you kind of just think like, OK, where where is this going? Um, there's a lot of peepers on the Super Bowl. Right. In 2017, it was one hundred and eleven point nine million viewers. All right. And in 2018, one hundred and three point four million viewers. And here uh, 2019, the one that just passed one hundred and fourteen point four million viewers. Now, look, there is roughly three hundred and twenty five million Americans in the United States. So that's a third of our population watching this. OK, that's that's pretty intense. It's a lot of peepers there. Um, and I, I just think it's interesting about the government shutdown, you know, ending or at least being placed on pause until February 15th, where we we'll either see another government shutdown or maybe the declaration of a national emergency. Because not only was it interesting, um, you know, so everybody can just settle down and watch the, f the football game for the government shutdown, the presidential alert system that they tested right before Trump started touting a national emergency um, over, you know, the border wall and, and 
things of that nature. And it's, it's, it's interesting also as well, you know, everything's interesting, right? The narrative that's being spun. Now, how many of you remember Jade Helm 15, okay? Uh, this, the unconventional warfare exercises. They had a, uh, this uh, unconventional warfare exercises, military operations that was done on domestic soil. And it was supposed to be training for foreign engagement because the areas like Texas, New Mexico, California, Arizona, they say that our, that landscape mirrors landscape over um, across the pond where they do these, you know, foreign engagements. And um, conservatives in Texas and other areas and, and even some liberals and others in the alternative narrative community and even the conspiratorial community, because, you know, Jade Helm got labeled as this big conspiracy theory. Uh, they were concerned about the actual intentions of what was happening or what was going to happen there they thought that this was going to be some type of military style lockdown or was going to segue into some kind of military style lockdown and there was just a lot of individuals that were very skeptical of what the military was really uh, up to and they did again another jade helm in 2016 and it was just called ux 16 ux for unconventional warfare exercise 2016 because it garnered so much you know national attention and nobody wanted what was supposed to be coming which was uh, you know martial law that's one of the things that was uh you know a big no-no during the obama administration nobody wanted martial law uh, the media touted this you know con conservative conspiracy theorists are afraid of military intervention and, and you know government shutdown and things like that and now what's being what's very interesting is the the narrative that's shifting and i've talked about it before how uh, there are people who believe that a martial law scenario has to happen in order for the bad liberals, you know, your George Soros's and your Clintons and the, the John Podesta's and all the people, you know, you know, all the really bad liberals and the really bad people in the deep state and your Kissingers, they're going to be locked up. And they're going to be dealt with. But before that can happen, martial law has to happen first. I think that's a very um, disconcerting narrative that's happening because now you have you see this flip flop where just a few years ago everybody was, you know, martial law is this big no-no and now it has to happen um, in order for the the opposition to be taken care of and uh, isn't that just you know appropriate now where we see this there's this the conspiracy theory if you will about the coup d'etat that's getting ready to happen uh there the power grab at the presidential and vice presidential level so that you know speaker pelosi will be introduced you know it's just that i, I bring these things up because it's to add some context into into what's out there in the greater, you know, in the ethos out there in the, the greater sphere of things. Because even if you don't follow these things, there are individuals who do, and these narratives evolve. And eventually, you know, when they when they catch wind of it in, in mainstream circles or political circles, they get to control the narrative. They control how it evolves. And then um, they get to paint whatever picture they like to, to spin it to their advantage and if anything is breaking the you know the standard model narratives and it's it, it's breaking course from it you'll be demonized um and that's just par for the course anyway take care of yourself out there i'm gonna be doing a short follow-up video to this just to reiterate a few points uh, especially about the missile launches that all the you know russia china japan did um talking about how all this kind of ties into to each other the presidential alert before, you know, President Trump touting the declaration of a national emergency. We'll get into that stuff. Um, California Carter, signing off.